Welcome back. All right, so uh, in our most recent live stream that, that we had with, with members and patrons, uh, I was asked about my favorite broadcast teams, and uh, I, it is hard to name a favorite broadcast team. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and put on a Detroit Red Wings hat and jersey because, I mean, Mickey Rudman has, has reached the level of legend status in my eyes. And, and he's, he's great to listen to. He's he's a lot of fun. Ken Daniels and, and Mickey Redmond work so well off of each other. And and to me, if I had to pick a favorite right now, that's it. And and to me, they have that nice balance. Are they biased in favor of Detroit? Well, of course, it's a regional broadcast. That's the expectation. On a national broadcast, you expect no one to say in the booth, I'm actually rooting for, and that's why when I'm watching a, a broadcast that I know is national in the States, and I hear Boston scores. Well, that's too bad. It it sh that shouldn't that shouldn't happen. It shouldn't be a thing. A regional, fine. Uh, although the regional broadcast can get a little bit too skewed. I the the only the only reason I say that is because there are times where I'm watching regional broadcast, and you'll hear, well, that's not a penalty. Well, that's not a penalty. Every time the home team takes a penalty, the one that the broadcaster is takes a penalty. And then whenever anything happens, it's, well, that should be a penalty. That has to be a call. I can't believe they didn't call that. And then you watch the replay and you're like, that's because there's nothing there. And it can, it can get frustrating. So, and I I found that to be the case with broad, with regional broadcasters often. And, and I would say a lot of them are on the American side. But I mean, there aren't as many broadcasters on the Canadian side. And there's definitely some bias with the Canadian side. But usually they'll admit it in a way that's not... I don't know. Anyways, let's just go through it. But it, it, it is one of those things that when I'm watching, I will definitely choose if there's two different broadcasts. Okay, this is being broadcast by, and I'll go over to that. So we're going to start with at the top, we've got NBC Sports Regional. Now, of course, NBC Sports Comcast uh, not having the national rights and, and people pretty quickly having opinions one way or the other on that and on how they feel about TNT and ESPN Plus having the rights. I will talk about them at the end of this. Because it feels like they're the, the new kid on the block. And so, um, you know, there's there's definitely, I think, some work to be done there. But there's a lot of promise. So you got Chicago, Philadelphia, San Jose, and Washington. In all four cases, when you're watching, you can tell who the announcers are cheering for. It is not usually to the point of it being kind of obnoxious. Not usually. Sometimes, sometimes. sometimes. And I've found more with the Chicago and Philly broadcasts a little bit more. Where sometimes I'm like... Ah, come on, guys. Just let's uh, let's call the game here. Uh, but that's that's something that happens again in a lot of these regional broadcasters. But I, I like the presentation uh, overall. It's very well done. It's it's not. It, it's it's definitely designed for a hockey fan that knows hockey. So there isn't as much explaining everything that's going on uh, as you see with some. But uh, again, that could be seen as a drawback on some level too for people to say hey we're supposed to be creating new fans but anyways uh, i do like the mbc sports regional I, I i don't have an issue with it uh altitude sports of course still has the rights to the colorado avalanche uh i do enjoy the altitude sports uh because and and i've said this before i do enjoy when a play-by-play -play announcer when when the home team scores the team he's rooting for scores and he screams and it's all happiness and then when the other team scores and it's sort of like ah nuts and there are times where I'm watching Altitude Sports and I'll hear the other team score that's against the Avalanche and just hear the way he says it. And I will say out loud to the TV, well, that sucked because <laughs> that's how I hear it is him like, well, that sucked. That went in. How did that goal go in? That's, this game is stupid. So, and there's times I say that too where it's like, well, that, forget it. This game's dumb. I don't know why I call hockey. I'm going to go live in the mountains. Anyways, so, and it's altitude, so it works, mountains. Anyway, so, yeah, I, I do get a kick out of altitude sports, and again, um, it, it's a fine broadcast. So I have a problem with yeah, the Avs broadcast in general. Nesson, yes. Uh, so, I'm known as a Bruins fan, but I, I cannot, in, in any good standing, stand here and say that Jack Edwards... When Boston's losing badly, he's miserable. When Boston's winning badly, he's... He's in, he, he is, he is just impossible. It's just, he was so giddy when they were beating up New Jersey that I kept saying to the TV, it's the devils. Like 
it's it's not like they were winning eight to one against Florida or against Tampa. Or on some level, I can understand being that giddy as a Bruins fan about Boston. It's the Devils, or, or being that being that giddy about Montreal, I should say. Um, everybody's giddy when Boston gets beat up, other than Boston fans. I get it. But yeah, Nesson can be hard. It can be tough to get through. Um, I, I generally, if I have another option, I will usually pick the other option, which is a shame because Andy Brickley is a, he's a treasure. I think Andy Brickley's very entertaining. Um, but again, with, with Jack, it just, it makes it tough to watch MSG networks. Uh, I think of the, of the groupings on the board. I think the MSG networks have grown on me the most. Uh, again, this is just old fashioned hockey broadcasting, Buffalo, New Jersey, the Islanders, the Rangers, Rob Ray's fantastic. I absolutely love Rob Ray's work. And then the MSG network here, you got Ken Danico does a very good job for New Jersey. Uh, and the Islanders Rangers broadcasts are very good. Uh, I really like what they do. Um, I, I have absolutely no complaint. Oh, and with Nesson, I really like the crew they have, too, in between periods. Um, Barry Peterson's great. Sofia Yurskovich is one of the best in terms of the, the, the announcers slash interviewers that we have in the NHL. But the MSG Networks has a very good crew, too. They have Shannon Hogan doing the in-between periods for the Islanders. I think she does a very good job. And, and just in general, again, I, I have zero complaints. Plus, I would say this. While announcers get excited when the team that they're covering scores, I don't hear nearly as much complaint. MSG networks are pretty close to sounding objective. Pretty close. Which, which when you're watching a regional broadcast, is about all you can ask for, right? You, you know there's going to be some level of bias. And it's amount of it's amount of how much how much you, you turn it up to. Now, Bally Sports. Uh, this was Fox Sports Regional, of course. Now it's Bally Sports. And they're changing the names of some of the channels, apparently, too, again. And so they're, they're Bally Sports. I think it's Bally Sports Midwest, Bally Sports. I, I know they're changing it. But anyways, whatever it's going to be. Um, my biggest problem with Bally Sports is that music. That When I was putting this together, I started getting that Bally Sports theme in my head. And if, if you're in one of these markets, you know the theme. And it's aggravating. It's aggravating. And, and and also, the Chiron on the bottom of the screen, I don't like that. I don't like the score and the shots and everything being on the bottom of the screen. I much prefer it at the top of the screen where there's just fans. Normally, the Chiron at the top of the screen isn't really blocking anything. And sometimes the one at the bottom looks like it is. And if it's not, then your framing's kind of odd when it comes to hockey. But I will say this. I think of everything I've got on this, this TV, I think I prefer the Bally Sports to everything else. And I think that includes the Canadian broadcasters on some level, although TSN, good good work, and we'll get into that. Uh, Anaheim, I do enjoy their their broadcasts. Uh, Brian Hayward, he does have as the the color commentator, he does have that that little bit of a bias in there. And sometimes he's overly critical of the Ducks as well, but it's entertaining to listen to. Uh, Arizona, of course, Tyson Nash makes some news talking about Beagle beating up Terry and how that's fine and and all the and, and really all of that. A lot of that controversy comes from Tyson Nash's comments there. But I, I get a kick out of the Arizona broadcasts. I really do. And and the fact that they, they sound so hopeful. If you didn't know where Arizona was in the standings and you watch their games, you would think they're in an important standing and that this is a big game. And you know what? As broadcasters, as announcers, that is exactly what they should be doing. Make every game sound like it's very important. Uh, Carolina. Uh, I, I like the Canes announcers very much. Uh, I know that losing John Forsling was tough, but uh, I like the job Maniscalco's done. I think he does a good job. Uh, I like Trip Tracy as well. Columbus, I think Columbus has decent announcers. Uh, they, they don't stand out for me one way or the other. I don't look at Columbus and say, oh, this is going to be so hard to listen to. But I don't, I don't really have that same affinity. I will say this, though. I, I do like the canon in Columbus. I, I do like some of the little tradition things in Columbus and one thing that I like about watching all the games and getting into all this is that you see that every fan base has their own experience in terms of watching the sport and and how they how they they view it and everything so Columbus there's more of a feeling when and it's hard to hard to really put into words other than say there's a feeling you get watching the Columbus broadcast you may not get with the others Dallas Dallas does a very good job uh, Dallas does a very good job and not only that I would say Dallas has one of the more neutral uh, when it comes to coverage, uh, Daryl Ray is very fair. And when Dallas is not playing well, he'll say it. Like, he won't make excuses. He'll he'll even say, I know this is the third game in four nights, but... And then he'll tear him a new one if he feels like he has to. 
where it's yeah they might be playing their third games of game in four nights but this is not an acceptable level of, of effort uh detroit i already mentioned detroit can daniels uh, I, I really like what they do uh, with play-by-play -play and everything. Their in-between periods is pretty good, too. Um, good good work with that. I'll say this, too. The in-between periods stuff in Philadelphia is excellent. I, I do need to mention that. They're, they do a very good job, too, their, their between period stuff. Even though I don't get to watch as much of it as I'd like to, because usually there's, like, 15 games on, so just flipping around. Uh, but when everything is shut down when like everybody's in the midst of an intermission i will watch one of the intermission shows philly i enjoy theirs boston i'll watch their intermission shows for nesson um dallas does a good job detroit does a good job florida let's talk about florida a bit florida is a lot of fun to watch florida announcers though are getting spoiled at this point with how much florida comes back and how much florida scores so if florida's down five nothing the announcers will be like yeah it's five nothing that's kind of cute I wonder how Florida's coming back today. You can hear it. You can hear you can hear the happiness in their voice knowing that Florida will come back, that it's on its way. Florida's down for nothing. They score a goal and they go, and the comeback has started, and they're always right. So Florida, might be a little bit of cockiness in there, but you know what? Florida hasn't won around since 1996. Be as cocky as you want about whatever's going on this year. You've earned it. LA, I've talked about LA before. LA announcers uh, in seasons past were selling hope when LA was mathematically alive for a playoff spot. Didn't matter if they were 20 points out. They would point out this game puts them closer to the playoffs if they get the win if these other things happen. And we know it looks impossible, but it's not impossible. And you could tell they may not 100% believe that, but again, they're selling hope and I think that's okay. And, and I do enjoy the Kings broadcasts. Minnesota. Minnesota does a very good job. Valley's Minnesota, very good. Um, <clears throat> I really have no complaints when it comes to the Minnesota broadcasts at all. Um, Nashville. Nashville can get somewhat obnoxious at times, but uh, I think with Nashville, I, th I think with the environment and, and just that atmosphere in the crowd and, and the celebrating that happens whenever they score a goal, it's understandable. Uh, and with Nashville, you're going to be catering to a different hockey fan than you are in Detroit, a different hockey fan than you are in uh, Columbus or in, in where any of the MSG or the NBC broadcasts originate, right? So you have to you have to look at your viewer and say, we want to keep them here. So your broadcast may be a little bit brasher, a little bit louder, a little bit more over the top. And sometimes Nashville does go for that. Although I really like Chris Mason and and I think I think they do a good job as well. St. Louis, everybody knows I'm a huge fan of Panger. I have been a big fan of, of Darren Pang. I was quite surprised last night that it was a Blues home game, and he was instead calling the game on TNT. <clears throat> he does a very good job as well, and, and honestly, St. Louis, their broadcasts are so well done. Uh, if I was ranking them, St. Louis would be pretty high. Honestly, they would be pretty high. As would Tampa. Dave Randorf, play-by-play -play guy uh, out of Vancouver. Good for Randorf. I, it's still weird for me to hear Dave Randorf calling Tampa games. But I'm happy about it because it's like that's a voice from from when I was you know a teenager when I was a young adult watching uh, just local sports and to hear him calling games from Tampa it's it's fun and you can tell they're having fun you can tell that they're having fun watching the games and that's a big thing too is that announcers don't sound miserable there are times where announcers might sound kind of miserable and that's that's not a good thing I know as a YouTuber if I sound miserable covering hockey. It's not a good thing. Uh, that that's not going to go well. And so, if if I'm starting up a video and I don't think I sound quite perky enough for the video, uh, then or what I qualify as perky, then I have to start over. I'm like, that's this just none of this is usable. It's all got to go. Tampa Bay, good broadcast. So generally, over the Bally's networks, I really like their broadcasts. I like how they put this together. Whoever's in charge of this knows hockey. And, and, and I understand a lot of this was inherited from Fox Sports, so I will absolutely give them the credit for hiring people that know their hockey and knowing to have that balance. Uh, AT&T Sportsnet. So this is not the same as Canadian Sportsnet. You've got Pittsburgh, Seattle, and Vegas because Root Sports is part of AT&T Sportsnet. Uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, there are times where the Pittsburgh announcers, I will I will have... have uh, I recently have noticed this a little bit where it's, it feels like every time Pittsburgh gets a penalty, they're like, that should be a penalty. 
And every time a, pe a penguin goes down, they're complaining that that should be a penalty, that should be a penalty, and watching. And again, just watching, just purely from an objective standpoint, sometimes they're right, sometimes they're not. But one thing that I, and I talk about this with my wife a lot, where I'll be watching the broadcast and I'll say, um, this game is going on right now. Fans are going to be upset. The announcers are, are really making it seem like this is what's going on. And again, from an announcer's perspective, they may feel that way. But, it, but when you're, you're broadcasting out to people, people watching the game then at home would be like, man, he's right. We're getting hosed. But if you, if you watch the game, uh, there have been times where I've been watching game and I'm like, well, that that should that's not called, and nobody will say anything because it is it is. And again, this is just just mentioning this with, this with Pittsburgh. It mentioned it happens elsewhere too. There's nothing greater watching any of these broadcasts than when you see a clear trip or a clear hook, something really clearly on the screen, for whatever team that this this group is is cheering for, your play by play and color announcers, and they don't say anything about it. You're like, that was clearly a trip. And they didn't mention it. That was very clearly a trip. And that momentary silence, which is only beaten out by the momentary silence after there's really loud cursing and swearing on the ice. That is mon juice. That is absolutely fantastic. I There's nothing greater than a really, really clear tirade of swearing is even better. If it's like five or six different swear words get out before somebody mutes a microphone somewhere. And the announcers are, huh. Well, um... That happened, and then they then they move on. Uh, Seattle, I think Seattle's production in the beginning was clunky. It's gotten better, and JT Brown's gotten better. Uh, in the beginning, JT Brown really seemed like a guy who was learning on the job. He really seemed like he was kind of nervous, but he's better now, and I think he's doing a good job of of knowing when to bring up which topics and and when to focus on certain things in the game. I think he's done a very good job, and not only that, but knowing that they're in a market that is new to the NHL. Not new to hockey. Seattle's not new to hockey at all. But you're going to have new fans to the game. They're doing a good job of explaining it without over-explaining it. I think they've done a good job of, of making the game accessible, which is important. It's something I try to make sure I'm doing in videos as well. Explain it without over-explaining it. You don't want to talk to people like they're, they're four. But you also don't want to talk to them as if, well, you should know what that is in this game. You should already know if you're going to be watching a hockey broadcast. And I think they, they ride that line well. As did Vegas when they first got their team. And now I think Vegas has a very strong broadcast group. Absolutely. Uh, Darren Millard, really solid pickup for them too uh, in between periods. Um, I think Gary Lawless has done a very good job. Lawless and Order being there. I, I think Vegas has put together a very strong team. And so I, I think AT&T Sportsnet in general has done a very good job. Again, I know it sounds like I'm picking on Pittsburgh, and I apologize. I Just something I noticed in the game the other day, and it's not something I'm going to mention in a review, because that would seem odd for me to mention it in a review, but it's out there. So that's all your American broadcasts. Let's get into the Canadian. Sportsnet. Uh, Calgary. I love the Calgary broadcasts. I think, I think they do a very good job. Edmonton. They can be a tad loud at times. Uh, it can be a little bit loud, and there are times too where Louis DeBrusque may want a lot of panel, a lot of power plays for the Oilers. He there, <laughs> I should have a counter. Like on a night where there's only one or two games, I should have a counter for how many times I hear a color announcer call a penalty on the other team, and how many times he he doesn't think that that the team he's watching and and being paid to, to cover deserved a penalty i would be really interested to see what that number would look like uh but yeah because i i think it'd be kind of lopsided but again i get it now toronto there's a split some games belong to tsn some games belong to sportsnet so there aren't actually two toronto maple leafs don't panic uh vancouver i've, I've always liked the two johns john shorthouse john garrett john garrett's been covering canuck games forever um and i i get that people don't like his bias he wears it he wears it well. Plus, when the Canucks do something stupid, he has no problem with saying they do something stupid. Whether it's a turnover, whether it's a penalty, whether it's some kind of a gaffe that they make, he has no problem calling them out. And it's rare that they'll they'll complain about penalties that aren't actually penalty. Like they 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 don't seem to complain about oh this was called and it shouldn't have been when it absolutely should have been. I don't see that a lot. Um, and and they they have a good sense of humor. They, they, they really have a good sense of humor, really good uh, back and forth, which is huge. And you can't just create that. You can't just hire guys randomly and throw them together and think, well, these guys will have great chemistry because you don't really know until 
until they're in the booth together. And sometimes you get announcers that it just doesn't work. So but then we get to the TSN broadcasts, and it might be the best broadcasting in hockey. It, it could be. I, I really think TSN does a very good job. And while Sportsnet has the contract and they spend a lot of money on it, when you watch a TSN broadcast and you watch a Sportsnet, no offense to the Sportsnet broadcast, but to me, the TSN ones, it just works. Uh, Montreal, Toronto, uh, over here, of course, split with Sportsnet. Ottawa, Winnipeg. Uh, I really like the Winnipeg broadcasts a lot. I think they're well presented. I think they're well put together. Uh, and, and I think all of them have pretty good in-between period segments. I think TSN does it the best. Where you have Pierre Lebrun, you might get Bob McKenzie in there. You might have to offer him some margarita mix in order to get him to come into the studio, but he'll come in. And so, because um, he's retired, so he doesn't have to. He can just hang up the phone and be like, I, I don't know, no margaritas, guys. I don't know if I'm coming in. Um, it, and that has to be great, right? After years and years of being in the studio all the time and being the insider. Uh, then now that feels like that's gone to Elliot Friedman. And then you get into the national broadcast. So I'll, I'll mention Hockey Night in Canada first. I think Hockey Night in Canada does a, a pretty good job, and, and I know there's a lot of complaints and debates about who is or isn't in the studio. I think they do a good job of trying to find some balance there. Uh, I don't have a problem with good-spirited debate. I think we get good-spirited debate in Hockey Night in Canada segments. And uh, the the after 40 minutes, when you get the 32 thoughts, and you've got Merrick and, and Friedman, that's really become the place you go to get the, the biggest news and scoops of the week. That these guys are going to have stuff they might have been sitting on for days. That they bring out on Hockey Night in Canada. And you're like, wow, that's really interesting. Uh, but yeah, so I, I think in general Sportsnet does well with the, with the package that they, they've paid a lot for. I do think Sportsnet has a little bit superior uh, of, of a broadcast overall. I'd be interested to know from Canadian fans watching or even American fans who watch Canadian broadcasts. Do you prefer the Sportsnet feeds or the TSN feeds? And then there's TNT or ESPN Plus, which basically the same, right? You have basically the same, uh, it, it very similar presentation and whatnot. A uh, bit clunky with ESPN Plus at times. Uh, there's been issues with TNT at times as well. Uh, I, I don't like the pregame show being so long. That I'm not a fan of. And uh, I, I think the... The, honestly, the back and forth in the studio stuff, and I, I know that they have big hockey names doing it. I, I generally don't find myself hanging around on that for that long. Um, and I, I I don't know. It, it just feels like it's it's overstuffed in places like the pregame show. Uh, but again, it's its first it's their first year. We'll see if that changes and and we'll see, you know, it could be just me. Could just be me. Everybody else might think that their presentation's fantastic. Uh, but there are times, too, where you're watching and you're like... the. I will say this, too. While other broadcasters have this issue, too, uh, it feels like with the TNT ESPN broadcast at times that they're calling a game, but they're not. They're more interested in what's going on somewhere else. Or they might be more interested in what food somebody's eating. Or they might be more interested in... You know, there's that There's that issue. That's, that's an issue. I think that when you're watching a broadcast, people should be interested in it and and not sound and, and, and sound like they're interested in it. And so I think sometimes I've had that problem watching theirs. Not that that doesn't happen with others as well. There are definitely broadcasts that have had like the, the interviews while the play is going on that go on way too long. Where you're like, wait, they're still interviewing. Why are they still interviewing? There's so much going on right now. There's so much happening. And so again, it can kind of take you out of that moment. Uh, and, and there are times watching broadcasts and I'll say it's happened to me watching. It, it's definitely happened to me watching, I would say, uh, one, four, about five or six different, different ones on the board where I've actually muted the TV at times. Cause just all of the chatter is so distracting from what's going on in the ice. I can't, I can't really fully concentrate cause they keep taking me out and we're like, what are they talking about now? So I may actually mute the TV for a few moments just to try to focus on what's going on in the ice. But am I the only one that does that? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Which which broadcast do you like the best in the National Hockey League uh, of the regionals or of the nationals as well? Uh, how do you feel TNT, ESPN Plus have done? I will also throw this in. I think that the NHL making it so that certain games are only available on ESPN Plus and not not getting into every household and every eyeball on those games, especially when it's a really big game. 
I honestly think that's kind of counterproductive. But because I, I think for a league that wants to grow and wants to get as many eyeballs on the product as possible, I understand wanting to have that exclusive content that gets people to sign up for the paid paid part of the business. But yeah, it, it just feels like it's it's a dick move to fans that maybe it's their team out of market. Maybe they're a season ticket holder. Their team's on the road. And now they have to pay extra for that 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 package, for the digital package, so they can watch their team on the road. And maybe they don't want to. Maybe they don't have the money to do it. So, uh, yeah. But, again, you know, in an age where it feels like everything's becoming more accessible, sports might kind of be going backwards. Like, even movies, everything's kind of digital now. And we're not going to see them all in the theater anymore. And they've started realizing digital and streaming is just as good. And, and now sports, which has been free accessible on TV... Uh, there's, there's the paid model coming into that. And I, yeah, again, let me know your thoughts on that too. All right. All my babbling done. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. If you're browsing your way through, you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. And thanks for giving me this platform where I can watch all of these feeds. Because it's a lot of fun uh, to look at all these on the board and go, yeah, I know this. Because I've watched about 70 games from, from each of them. And so, yeah, I definitely will... We'll form an opinion on that, but I'd like to know yours. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.